Hey guys, Sean here from Visible Dark. Let me introduce you to Dwarf Labs Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope. Uh, it kind of looks like a uh, an old style camcorder a little bit, but uh, it's trust me, it's way more cool than that. Um, I know that there's actually been a lot of videos done on this already. Um, I got mine, full disclosure, Dwarf Lab sent me this unit. Um, they said I could keep it. They just wanted me to try it, do a review. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing my review video. I haven't, I wasn't able to do a review uh, video sooner because we were having uh, clouds. We were experiencing clouds here since last November. Um, it was only recently that we got some clear nights and I got a, a bit of an opportunity to work with it, test it out. So um, this is this is my opportunity to do a video on it and uh, explain a little bit about it. Um, the um, Dwarf, as I said, Dwarf Labs sent me this unit and uh, to try out and test. They didn't send me a script or anything like that. Um, I didn't, I wasn't pressured to, you know, say it was good or anything of that nature. So this is an honest review, uh, what I think of this little smart telescope and its capabilities. Um, so this is a, a nice compact little unit. Um, it uh, has a, a, a battery in it, so it's uh, completely mobile in that sense. And uh, it has a wide field lens and a telephoto lens on it. Um, it can, uh, you can calibrate it uh, so that it can track the stars. It can do plate solving. It has a database of objects that you can select and slew to, uh, galaxies, nebulas. Um, and uh, it uh, has full capability through your uh, smartphone or your tablet. Now, they have an Android app for it currently. As far as I'm aware, uh, what I've read recently um, was that they have an iOS app as well that they have submitted and uh, it's waiting for approval. So it is coming to ISO as well, um, but right now there is an Android app for it that you can download and uh, use and it connects uh, to the smart telescope, the Dwarf 2. It connects your, uh, your, your smartphone or your tablet connects to the uh, unit here and you have full control over it and I'm going to show you that interface and how it works uh, give you a basic run through of how it works and stuff so you get a, an idea of uh, um, how to control it and what you can do with it all right so what else uh, oh I know uh, one second let me just grab this here so like I said this is the more expensive unit um, slightly more expensive it's not that bad uh, it does come with some filters so it has two uh, neutral density filters uh, basically solar filters block 99.9% .9 of the uh, sunlight and uh, it has an ultra high contrast filter uh, which um, I, I haven't tried this yet I haven't tried that but I, so I assume it would be good for uh, some nebula and stuff like that um, uh, blocking out some light pollution and, and whatnot if you're dealing with that so um, how do the filters work uh, basically they they go in front of the the two uh, lenses here, the uh, wide field and the telephoto lens, um, they thread into this little unit here. And this little unit is magnetic, so it just basically snaps on like that. And uh, away you go, basically. So pretty easy to use. I did have an opportunity to try it on the, uh, on the sun. Um, it uh, worked really well, performed well. I could see sunspots, so it was actually pretty cool. The sun was setting over my uh, southwest. And uh, I did have that opportunity. It was pretty cool. Um, but I think the, the photos of the moon that I took definitely uh, give you an idea of the capability that the, uh, the little unit has. So, um, yeah. Anyways, it um, also comes with, uh, this unit here comes with this uh, uh, tiny scope. It's called a mobile microscope, uh, which is kind of cool. little added bonus here that uh, comes with it. And that little mobile tele or microscope, I should say, um, you can use to magnify up to 400 times. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. And it connects, it also connects to your smartphone. So you can view the images on your smartphone while you're using it. All right, so let's get over to the app. Let's fire that up and connect it to the uh, Dwarf 2 smart telescope. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, so this is the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope app, the uh, user interface. And right now I'm looking at the sun, actually. I'm pointed at the sun. And I'm just going to use the... What I'll do is I'll uh, switch out here. Go to the wide field so I can get the sun into the center of the telephoto. There we go. There we got it. And then I'll switch back. Yeah, there's no sunspots to look at, unfortunately. So... 
we we'll just have to make do, but we are uh, looking at the sun. And if we start on the right hand side here, you can see we've got a menu, uh, time lapse. We can take a time lapse. We can do photo mode, we we'll just take a single photo. You can do video, you can do uh, the gigapixel panorama, you can do the uh, astrophotography mode for taking uh, pictures of the moon and uh, deep sky objects. You can also do uh, dark frames, take dark frames in the astro dark mode. Now just to the left of that a bit is the feature button. Then we've, so the feature button is there, so then we've got uh, the shutter button, the green one there is the shutter button. And you can hit that and take a photo. I'm just going to bring the sun back up a bit. And we will enable the tracking. And you've got a focus mode here. You can auto focus. And you can manually focus. Just like that with the plus or minus keys. Okay, and then this here. This adjustment here allows you to increase or decrease the rate of speed that the unit moves, slews, uh, manually. So if you want to go fast to get to uh, an object in the sky, you can ramp it up and then bring it down to do fine adjustments to center it, just like you see me doing here, where it's just moving ever so gently. And then you've got the two views here, obviously. You've got the telephoto lens view, which is the close-up of the sun, and you got the wide field viewed view in the subframe, and you can switch them out if you want, just by tapping. And over here we've got the adjustments for the telephoto and the wide field lens. You've got uh, shutter speed, gain, white balance, infrared cut, you've got brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue, sharpness, and preview, and you've got wide, the wide, same thing for the, the wide field. And control that as well. Okay, so in the astro mode, we've got access to, this would be done at night obviously, not during the day looking at the sun, but we can calibrate the dwarf too, so it knows where it's pointed in the sky, so it'll go through a calibration routine, and it'll plate solve uh, different uh, points in the night sky to determine its position, and then you've got a catalog that you can auto go to so you can select from planets and stars and deep sky objects as you can see here whatever is available for you in your night sky there's the Orion Nebula which is visible at night here currently so I could choose that and click confirm and the Dwarf 2 would slew to the Orion Nebula plate solve and center on it you can stop the go to of course and also to the left of the go to option is more and this allows you to change formats fits format or fit, uh, tiff you can choose i'm going to leave it at fits for pix insight use so i can process it in pix insight then the count allows you to adjust the uh, number of frames and the exposure time and you can bin uh, two by two you can turn that off so you're not binning two by two and you can choose to display a stacked or a single image as well and that's about it. That is pretty much a uh, overview of the app and how it works. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. It's easy to pick up on. It doesn't take a lot of uh, learning. It's uh, laid out nicely and the menu system works quite well on it. But yeah, I think this is a lot of fun. Um, I, I had a good time with it. Um, it I'd probably give it an eight out of 10. Uh, it worked well. It, it did work really well, actually, considering what it does, its capabilities and its price. I mean, you, you almost have to give it a 10 out of 10 in a way, but I'm going to say an 8 out of 10 um, just because um, it could, it, it's not as good as imaging with a telescope and dedicated camera and whatnot, um, but it, it does have a lot of uh, capability. It's a lot of fun and I could see its potential for outreach, especially um, in a situation where you're an astronomy club and you have a star party or something like that, you want to show people some objects, uh, do it, you know, a quick little run around the sky. This little unit could do it for you really easily. And uh, I think uh, people would be pretty impressed with that uh, as well as learning about the night sky at the uh, at your star party. So it has a great capability for outreach like that. Um, 
and of course, terrestrial and, and uh, nature photography and that uh, uh, and video, it, uh, it has both that capability. Um, so it has a dedicated astronomy mode that you can go into for astrophotography. Um, I should say a dedicated astrophotography mode that you can go into uh, to do imaging of galaxies and uh, nebula. Um, but you also have basic photo and video as well that you can use for terrestrial purposes. So, hey, welcome to this video. If you like astrophotography and astronomy, pics and sight, um, hardware, software reviews, tips, tricks, all that good stuff with regards to astronomy and astrophotography, definitely subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any future videos. And don't forget to like and comment.